Hi, I'm Jean Jennings from Automobile Magazine, and I'm here with the CEO of Ford, the rock star of rock stars in my business, Alan Mullally. So, Alan, so, Alan, Volvo, I think we want to talk about Volvo. Because yes. Because that is a big deal for you guys. You've just sold Volvo. Yes. For $1.3 billion, was that correct? $1. For $1.8 billion. Ooh. Yes, I know. Now, but to your point, Gene, it's really important, as you know, because three years ago, we decided that we we're going to focus on Ford, Lincoln, and Mercury. And at the time, Ford had become a house of brands. And so we divested Jaguar and Land Rover and Aston Martin, took down our equity relationship in Mazda. And now, as you point out, we just completed the sale of Volvo, which is great. We got a great owner. Uh, but what it really means now, it's going to unleash all the creativity one more time inside Ford to focus on a full family of vehicles under the Ford brand. That, that sounds, that has been your plan all along. Exactly. Except you didn't put Volvo up for sale then, and I know there were people looking to buy it, so why not then? Well, I think at the time, uh, we really agonized about where Volvo was as far as the business and where their product line was. They're pretty, uh, pretty integrated with well uh, but yeah. also you know that we uh, made some big decision to keep investing in Volvo because if we were going to sell them that it had to be a you know a good product line as well as a good business so we waited a little bit until we got the new products coming and now they've got uh, a great lineup and and I, I think it's uh, time to time to do it you know uh, Ford spent a many more billions buying Volvo than they than they spent selling Volvo what did Ford ever get from Volvo uh, my guess is Zero. Well, I think there's some enabling technology, especially on the uh, safety side, because Volvo clearly, uh, for many years, had a lead. And one of the neat things about Ford now is it, it is considered uh, one of the premium safe uh, vehicles on all of our uh, lineups. So I think that was a, a good uh, a good partnership with Volvo. You know, when Renault bought bought into Volvo some years ago, they pretty much stripped all that safety technology for themselves. Suddenly they had all these five-star cars coming out of Renault. Are you worried, and I know there must be concern that the Chinese buying Volvo will have access to a lot of your electronics and some highly proprietary technology. What do you do about that? Well, I think in our case, the most important thing we do to compete is to keep innovating and using the latest technology, and that'll be our competitive advantage. And, uh, you know, clearly they're going to have a global brand and, and global capability, but uh, our business plan is, is to be more competitive, use technology and innovation, and move faster than our competition. What are you going to do with the money? I assume you're just going to pay back pay off some of that a little bit higher rate debt. That's a very good uh, <laughs> assumption, uh, because clearly we have a lot of uses of money. One is to improve our balance sheet, like we were talking about. And you notice that uh, even with our warrant, with the, uh, um, with the uh, warrant sale and the Volvo oh. sale, that we're also going to now pay down part of the revolver, because our plan is, is, uh, is to continue to improve our balance sheet. And, you know, great news on the Warren sale for the UAW. It's, fa it's fantastic. How much money? I mean, they made some money. They, they put their put themselves on the line for Ford and got some money back. Absolutely. And that was part of the deal. Exactly, Gene, because we, uh, we put in the agreement these options that they could buy, depending on what the stock price was. So, you know, I think they're doing what anybody would do. They're diversifying their portfolio, and now they're, they're financing their retiree health care, which is fantastic. And remember, our plan was always profitable growth for all. So as Ford mm -hmm. does well, Everybody, all stakeholders it's do well. It's got to soften up the UAW a little bit for you, huh? Well, they really have appreciated the close <laughs> working together relationship with Ford. Very nice. What does that do for your stock in the short term? Is it going to hit it at all? Well, I think people are, are, are still digesting this information because I think some people thought that it might be dilutive. Mm -hmm. They're not realizing that we had already allocated those shares before Christmas when we put it in. So all that's happening now is we're just changing ownership of the shares. And people will figure that out. But the, you know, the real stock price represents everybody's thinking about about the long-term value creation, and clearly uh, the investors love where Ford's going uh, with our focus on great cars and trucks. Well, speaking of long-term and getting back to Volvo, um, the news is out. You've sold Volvo to Geely, and uh, Lewis Booth is in the papers, and the re then it says the deal is expected to be finished sometime in September. Can you explain to people <laughs> how that works? <laughs> well. Uh, first of all, you know, we necked it down to Geely, 
And then what we announced on Sunday was a definitive agreement. So that means we have all the commercial terms decided, all the technical terms decided, all the intellectual property terms, so we have a firm deal. Now the only thing left to do is to finish the regulatory and the government approvals, which we have to do in both the United States and in uh, China. But uh, nobody sees any issues with doing that, but that's just part of the process of getting the final approvals. And of course the Chinese famous uh, way of doing business, which is the deal's all done, and then they roll up their sleeves and start doing the deal. We are very glad to complete the uh, uh, and finalize the agreement to sell so Volvo. So you think it's final? <laughs> they might not. I see that by September, Lewis Booth will probably be speaking Chinese and Swedish. <laughs> Lewis has done a great job. When does he get to come home? Uh, whenever he would like. And I think that uh, it's going to be done uh, on schedule. Well, this is great. You have, uh, I think that's it. That's the last bit of the puzzle out there. Now you're really focused here at the show. You're uh, moving forward with uh, your first uh, Mercury hybrid. Absolutely. And you look at the Mercury lineup now, and you've really uh, followed that closely and reported it well. We have probably the finest Lincoln lineup we've ever had with the MKZ now, and, and also with the MKX, the MKS, and then the MKT. So uh, people are very excited about the Lincoln uh, lineup. After three years, you probably know what all those MKs are, don't you? I do. I think I learned most of them when I met you the first time. And you okay, said, I was, I was a little rude. And you that. still have some questions about whether uh, everybody else gets it. Yeah, that. But we're working on that too. Still working on some names. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much. Gene, I really appreciate thank you. it. Have a great you, show. Don't you want to go through the whole product lineup one more time? Oh my God. Yeah, the, the car, oh the Fiesta, the Focus, the Fusion, the, the new Taurus, <laughs> no, so and the Mustang, the Escape, the Edge, the Flex, He's the new Explorer, the Expedition, the Ranger, the F series, Ford. the E series, and Settled the transit. There we go. <laughs> All right, thanks give me that diesel transit. Okay, thanks a lot. All right, bye. So long. Thank you. And that's that.